Chciałbym serdecznie przedstawić przedstawicieli Europarlamentu. Nick Griffiths, who is the member of European Parliament and he is the chairman of British National Party. And Bela Kovac, również członek Europarlamentu i przedstawiciel partii Jobbik, treasurer of National Alliance Movement. Dziękuję Panom serdecznie. Ja będę zadawał pytania po angielsku, a potem jakoś będziemy tłumaczyli to na polski. Pierwsze i zasadnicze pytanie, które zadam, będą napisy po angielsku, przepraszam. In view of what is, what you are trying to do, form the National Alliance Movement, and as I understand, you're planning to coordinate the the similar actions and movements all around Europe. Um, what do you think about the future of European Union? Because on one hand, it looks like European Union, for a number of reasons, financials and so on and so on, is falling apart. On the other hand, in a countries like UK, Britain, or Hungary and many other countries, Poland included, many people think about uh, considering uh, really leaving the Union altogether for a number of reasons. And I won't go into details, but um, what do you think about um, the future of European Union and what is the need uh, for coordinated action that you plan? Yes. Well, the need for coordinated action by nationalists is that the, the internationalists and the liberal elite are coordinated. And if we're not, if we don't learn lessons from each other, if we don't exchange ideas, new technologies, we will be left behind. So that's a, a purely practical need, first of all. Do you want to translate sections? or? No, no, we'll have um, writing. Oh, okay, I see. Um, so that's on a purely practical level. There's, there's a reason for it. But um, on a bigger picture, I think some people who are... Uh, against the idea of a federal Europe are now thinking it's nearly all over because it's on the point of collapse so we can just sit and wait. It's a very dangerous position to take because the thing that you must understand is that although this crisis is now running out of control, in its origin the uh, the liberal elite, the people that uh, in Britain we call the Europhiles, people like Barroso, they knew this crisis was going to happen. They created the single currency knowing it would create a crisis they called it a beneficial crisis because it was one which would, they thought give them the excuse to impose common complete fiscal one government on all of Europe in a way that couldn't have been done democratically. So if the people won't accept it you have to have a crisis to force people to accept it. So the European Union isn't, Union isn't finished yet and before they let go and just say it's all over they clearly plan whether they have the nerve or not is another matter but they planned all along to impose one fiscal government on the whole of Europe using a crisis as an excuse. They have their crisis and unless the people who stand up for genuine democracy, for freedom, for national sovereignty are prepared to organise and fight certainly at a political level very and much more effectively than is doing done, being done now, then there's every chance that the liberal elite will impose their single federal Europe on the rest of us in the teeth of the crisis. So what is your um, views in terms, why do you form this National Alliance movement to coordinate the action of all uh, movements in the singular countries all around Europe or what is the <coughs> motive? So it, it's partly a matter of coordinating as I said before, we believe that because the internationalists cooperate and learn from each other uh, then we need to do the same, um, especially in terms of modern technology and so on. Uh, so that's part of it. But also, as I spoke in the press conference, uh, by 2014 there will be two lists. When people go to vote in the European elections, there will be two lists instead of just one. So instead of the one whereby you elect your local MEP for your part of Poland or for Poland, there will also be a second list whereby you're electing people on a pan-European basis. So there will be one Communist Party trying to elect people over the whole of Europe, one Green Party, one Christian Democrat Party. And if the nationalists aren't organised in advance, we simply won't be on that list, which means that the voice, of the, the nationalist voice, the voice for tradition and sovereignty, will be even weaker than it is now. 
So we have to avoid that. And these people, the, the federal Europeans, they're creating this new way of running Europe. And unless we're contesting it, we will simply be left out and our electors will be left out as well. So who governs Europe at the moment? Are there national governments or Brussels or the bureaucrats as we call them in Poland in yes. Brussels, Mr. Kovac? Yes, that's the most important question what uh, you are asking now. Uh, as we declared in our program, uh, I mean of the uh, European level parties program, that we don't against the European Union. It's something surprising what I'm talking, yes? But, but, yes, it is. but uh, please don't forget that uh, we don't, uh, we are not again the European Union, but not in this form. Not as now the European Union is uh, dictating for each 27 countries from Brussels. And now the situation is went out, um, it's my opinion, went out for, uh, from the control of the national governments, because uh, if something is decided in Brussels, it's an obligation for all nationalist government, uh, I mean national governments. So that is the point, that is the question, what we are against. Otherwise, cooperating between 27 countries among the European Union, we are for, we support. Why not uh, to have for, for Great Britain good relation with Poland, I mean economical relation, trade uh, unions, uh, every kind of uh, uh, business, why not? We are Europeans, we are living in the same continent. But the problem is the bureaucracy and the dictatorship of Brussels, the European Union. That's the question, that's the point. And the first question was, uh, what will be the future of the European Union? I got two answers. First, if they will follow the same way, what they did uh, till now, it will be end of the European Union. But if they are able to change for a cooperative uh, European Union instead of dictatorship of Brussels, I think the European Union can be alive even in the future. But I hear uh, that uh, they are very, very... Um dangerous laws are being considered, like for instance in Hungary I hear, the parliament is considering introducing the law that the citizens of the country cannot criticize any laws or movements or projects proposed by Brussels. So in other words, European Union governed by uh, bureaucrats in Brussels are trying to close the mouth of Hungarian people. Is and, that and true? I, I, I'm afraid, yes, of course it's true. And you, you, if you will follow the press, you can see that uh, within two weeks this law will get through the Hungarian parliament. Um, what does it mean for me? It means the, for me that uh, the Hungarian uh, prime minister and the Hungarian government is a very good student in Brussels. So uh, they won't be even, even the best student. Uh, if they are thinking and getting through the Hungarian parliament so kind of uh, laws on one hand. On the other hand, of course now we have nationalists, especially the Hungarians and my party, has to stand up and say no. Because you know, uh, third year I'm working already in Brussels in the European parliament. In one day I'm hearing more than 100 times that democracy and how democratic uh, the European Parliament and the European Union. Now I will have a question, a uh, written question, an oral question, uh, to the Parliament, to the Commission. Please explain to me, is it a democratic law in a member state that the people cannot criticize even the European Union? It is a very, very interesting answer. And very interesting for Polish people because we were looking at Hungary and uh, uh, Premier Orban as an example of um, national um, say that Hungary was trying to impose upon Brussels and I hear now that this is not exactly the case. You're saying that uh, 
Premier Orban is uh, Viktor Orban is uh, now leaning towards. Um, but he has no other chance. No other chance. Why? Usually, uh, the journalists were asking me, "What's your opinion about uh, Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary?" My answer is very simple and really understandable. Uh, in his case, in 2089, uh, he got into a boat. But this boat is so far uh, from the shale sure. Sure. Sure, that even if he wants to leave from there, he cannot. Maybe you understand what I mean by that. I understand. It all comes back to money, but... <laughs> I'm not talking about money. I know, I know. I hear that in a country like Britain, with democracy, as long as the modern world, I hear that the parliament is trying to introduce a law limiting the uh, demonstration, public demonstrations. Well, they've already passed the law limiting that. Uh, so uh, now the uh, the local police, uh, without any uh, reasonable excuse, can simply say uh, that if people demonstrate in a certain area, they will uh, arrest them. Uh, we've had a, a case recently where uh, we had members of my party were uh, demonstrating about an issue. There were a significant number of members of the public listening on a, a loudspeaker and then wanting information. Uh, and so when one of our people went to give them leaflets, he was arrested because he stepped outside the box. And they've been told you have to stay within a certain box. Now, uh, a freedom of speech whereby you can speak but only amongst yourselves and you can't talk to the public is no freedom of speech. And it's not something the British government is considering doing. It's already being done and it's, it's already been passed and it's being used against people who are demonstrating peacefully and lawfully right now. And just as in the case uh, here in Poland uh, with the, uh, the new laws against demonstrations, it's very easy for people to say, well, I don't agree with those people, so yes, I think that's a good law. But they need to understand that once a state, any state, has a law like that and the precedent set that they can use it, then it's only a question of who is next. Well, it's quite incredible. We haven't heard about this, actually, yeah. uh, actions in Poland. In Polish press, there was nothing to say. So what would happen with Speaker's Corner's Corner in Hyde Park, do you think? Um, well, what is the definition of uh, demonstration? <coughs> How many people have to be together to, uh, to, to, be, to demonstrate? I believe in Britain it's 18. Oh. Below that, you're OK. I so see. a small number of people can hold an opinion. But when a large number of people hold an opinion, then that's a very dangerous thing, unless you actually believe in democracy. And oh, then if right. a large number of people hold an opinion, even if I disagree with their opinion, I respect absolutely the right not just to hold it, but also to seek to propagate it, because that is the basis of freedom and democracy. So British people be feeling, uh, believe in democracy and freedom, but the government doesn't. And the same with uh, Hungary? It's a political question. Hmm. Well, what's the political issue? answer? What, what is the answer? Uh, as already I talked about, and also Nick Griffin, that uh, our political answer and the statements are very clear. We will fight against both of them. What about the freedom of speech in press, media, TV? Is it all also going to change? So we won't be able to speak like we speak today because next uh, few weeks we might be all arrested and God knows what. Well, there's different levels about freedom of the press. Fundamentally, the press is free if you own one. I see. So that's, that's, that, the that, that's been the case freedom. for a long time. Uh, and the ordinary people haven't had a voice. In recent years, thanks to the internet, uh, there is now a tremendous scope, as you know, and as your viewers know, for ordinary real people to organise and to get their views across such that 30 years ago we could not get on television and now no one can keep us off television if you think of TV as being connected to, some, to someone's internet connection. So there's been a great grassroots advance towards uh, a form of uh, broader democracy and broader use of the press uh, and this is precisely why the, the liberal left elite and capitalist big business alike are looking at various ways, desperately trying to find how do we shut the internet down or at least control it more 
uh, and things like the actor proposals and so on all to all the thin ends of the wedge aimed at uh, taking away from ordinary people the chance not just to think things but actually to get them across to other people. Well, we had a very, very large demonstration about uh, against ACTA in, in Poland and uh, we, uh, with Młodzież um, Polska, we really were instrumental in, in uh, stopping the Polish parliament to, to sign or to introduce this as a law. So um, we're living in a very interesting times and I think that internet is one of those very few um, uh, me media platform which are still free and uh, I'd like to declare from our point of view, I'd like to, uh, you know, I'll tell you about Nowy Ekran, which in Poland is one of the very, very few independent, really independent uh, media platform. And we will welcome our fight together and, you know, we offer, you know, at your disposal to the uh, National Alliance movement. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can uh, have your office here and... <laughs> And uh, please consider this. And uh, as I say, we have quite a substantial uh, part of Poland sharing our views and sharing your views. I hope to have uh, many discussions like this where, you know, hopefully we can present Hungarian and British and other countries, people, opinion on what is the future of, of each country, what is the future of our um, Europe. We, we uh, present the view that we should form actually the alliance of countries in the middle of Europe where Hungary, Slovakia, or Ukraine and uh, some others, maybe Bulgaria, because British are always sort of um, a bit on the side <laughs> of, of Central Europe, but we will always look at the Britain as the as the, as the home of democracy and free speech and uh, I hear that this is not the case anymore. Or at least there's a threat. Well, there won't um, be a case. In 2005 I was twice put on trial facing up to seven years in prison for speaking about uh, a specific problem that uh, we had with a section of the Muslim population preying on the young girls or other communities for sex uh, and even though the judge uh, pointed out that everything I said was true, everything I said was true. Nevertheless, uh, we had a, an early morning knock on the door. I was dragged away. Uh, the first time I was arrested, my uh, young children's Christmas presents were searched by the police, carted away in the early morning and put on trial twice um, for the same offence, alleged offence. In the end, I was found not guilty because we have uh, still one of the last vestiges of real freedom we have in Britain is a jury system. So the people who decide whether you're guilty or not are not state-appointed judges. They're 12 people just like you. And twice, 12 people just like me said what he's saying is true and he's entitled to say it and it's not intended to incite hatred. It's not going to incite hatred. Uh, we think these things should be talked about. So there is still some freedom left in Britain from ancient traditions, but when someone can be put on trial for telling the truth, you can see that pre freedom is under threat. Well, keep it under guard because in Poland we don't even have that. Because our judiciary system, it's actually very, very, uh, it's from the uh, old socialist mm -hmm. Poland. I don't know how it is in Hungary, but... Uh, well, gentlemen, I, once again, I, we were very, very pleased to, to see you here. And we really hope that uh, together and with some other organizations that they are close to Nove Ekran, we can really make it work. So let's, uh, let's hope uh, we will do great things for, for, for our countries and for Europe. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.